I figure the place to start, Frank, is uh, if you could tell me a little bit about your background with bioenergetics okay. and, uh, and the health field. Okay. Well, I graduated from medical school in uh, March of 1946 at uh, University of Oklahoma School of Medicine in Oklahoma City. And uh, then after I had an internship in Bridgeport, Connecticut, I uh, knew I wanted to uh, be a psychiatrist and I had to go back in the Army because the Army took over the medical school during the war and I had to serve two years back so I went in the Army and I uh, was lucky enough to get myself assigned to uh, the psychiatry down there in Brook Army Medical Hospital and then I decided to stay in the Army for my training and I had three years of more residency in uh, psychiatry at uh, Letterman Army Hospital. Then I was sent to Munich, Germany in the Army and uh, there was a well-known psychoanalyst there and I had my first uh, Freudian psychoanalysis with him for almost three years, three times a week. And then, then I was in uh, Upper New York State beginning in 1954 and I heard about the Karen Horney Institute which was the American Institute of Psychoanalysis in New York City. And I then had a, all the didactic work and then I had uh, three more years of neo Freudian analysis with a German analyst in New York City. And then in the uh, beginning of 1963, I came back to Oklahoma to Tulsa and I ended up as director of the Tulsa Psychiatric Center and uh, we began to have uh, some workshops from a friend of mine who was a disciple of Fritz Perls out in Esalen and uh, they were uh, in Gestalt psychotherapy and uh, that was the first time I'd seen attention paid to the body. They, they, they began to pay some attention to the body and, and what the body was doing and that gave me the idea that that was what I was looking for because I, I had gotten good out of both Freudian and my neo Freudian psychoanalysis but I, and for myself and for my clients but it hadn't done everything I wanted and so I asked my friend Jack who lived at Esalen wasn't there somebody that knew how to uh, connect the body with uh, the psychotherapeutic work and he said yeah there's a guy named Alexander Lowen and uh, he's has an office in New York City and so I got uh, Dr. Lowen's phone number and I called him and I told him essentially this story and that I was director of a psychiatric clinic and I was interested in what he did and he said do you want us to come and give you a workshop the next time we go to California so I said yes and he said well we'll do that so he came with several other of the co of his colleagues and gave a workshop interesting enough where we're going to have our workshop tomorrow uh -huh. not in the same room but in that building yeah and I was quite impressed and I thought after the weekend workshop this is what I'm looking for so I asked him how we could set up a, a training institute here and we did he showed me how to do it and uh, we set up a four-year program which was customary at that time and he came every year and John Paracas came every year and uh, the first several years I don't know exactly how many uh, Carl Kirsch and Mickey Frank came and then our trainers in addition to Drs. Lohan and Paracas were uh, was mainly Jack McIntyre and a few a few other outside trainers anyway so uh, I went through that four-year program twice uh, and attended all the sessions and 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 had some individual work along uh, with Dr. Lowen and then in 1976 so that was in the 60s when this, all this started in 1976 he said Frank I want you to be an international trainer and come to New York City and meet with the executive committee and I did that and uh, they approved I became a international trainer and then for quite a few years in there uh, every time I could attend a workshop where Dr. Lowen was presenting I would go and, and learn a lot more from him and sometimes he would have me work with some of the clients and we did that for a number of years so I don't know how many mm -hmm. workshops I uh, worked with him as my mentor but quite a few and then it was about, I would say, in the 1980s that he began to ask me to 
help with the workshops they were having at what they call the loft that the institute rented in New York City and uh, the format was uh, we'd have a group of people usually from all over the world and uh, we'd start Friday evening and then work Saturday evening and Sunday and then uh, some of the people from usually from Europe or South America would stay another four days and then he'd have me work with them uh, during those four days and we continued that format that we started in the loft and then in different hotels in New York City until we found the YWCA Camp in Pauline and then we did about 15 years of the workshops there where I, I helped him and I always learned a lot and enjoyed being with him very much and uh, certainly feel in bioenergetics Dr. Lowen has been my mentor and my teacher as well as my friend. Well, it's uh, out of that uh, discussion which covers many years, many questions come up. Yeah. And let me ask you, let me ask you, Frank, uh, going all the way back, what was your interest in psychiatry? Because oh, I know, I, back I know that was 40s. easy. I, uh, my father was a violinist, and, and I started learning to play the violin when I was four years old. And I always wanted to be a, a concert artist, but I saw when I was about 15 or so that I was never going to make it. I didn't have the technique and the ability to be a concert artist and I did not want to teach like my father uh, was a professor over there in, uh, at Oklahoma State and uh, so then I knew right away what I wanted to do because my mother had uh, I knew she always loved me without any question but she she had emotional problems and would sometimes get upset and I always wondered why from the far back as I can remember so from the time I could used the public library, which is probably, I was to say, maybe 11 or 12. I began to read psychology books and, and found Freud as a teenager, and, and I knew I wanted to be a psychiatrist. Uh, it's interesting. It reminds me, uh, <coughs> Dad, uh, Dad has mentioned to me that he believes that many people go into psychotherapy to fix their mother. <laughs> well, I fix their mother or themselves, that then I, as I got into it, then I wanted to fix myself, and that's why I had that analytic training, and I did whatever I, whatever I knew about, huh? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I told you how I, I, I didn't know about Byron's Eddie until I asked my friend. So one, do, one does what one knows about and right. what comes up. So. Yeah, yeah. And then you mentioned uh, your first experience with the body work was actually with Fritz Perls and Gestalt. And of course Fritz Perls was like uh, Dad, Al Lowen, uh, yeah. a, uh, a student of Wilhelm Reich. Yeah. And again, my question to you is what was it in that experience with Fritz Perls that made you aware of how important the body was? Well, I never actually worked with Pearls, but with one of his students. And like I said, I was always looking for something. I knew there was something missing. And, and when the, they began to pay attention to the body and talk about what was happening in the body, I knew that's, that's where I wanted to go because that completed the picture of working with the whole organism. Yeah, well, we now, 30, 40 years on, uh, certainly recognize that as being the total truth. Yeah. And perhaps it's a little redundant, but I'd be curious if you could distill for me what you feel is special and unique about the work my dad did, the work of bioenergetics. Well, you see, uh, of course, uh, we come from uh, the heritage of psychoanalysis, and in psychoanalysis, the client is perfectly passive, lies on the couch, and the analyst even sits behind. So you can't, the patient can't see the analyst, and he just talks. But he's completely passive. Then, when Reich began to uh, involved and saw the importance of the body and how the tension in the body uh, is the way the organism actually makes the defenses, Reich still had the patient lying on a couch or on a, like a massage table and sometimes he would massage the tense muscles but essentially the patient was still passive and when uh, Lowen and Paracas developed bioenergetics, the big thing, the main thing they, they did first 
was get the patient standing up on their own two feet and Dr. Lowen told me many times that he thought his work on getting the patient on his feet and as we say grounded working with the feet to connect with the, the ground or the floor was, was really his biggest achievement. But then the next thing was that then the patient became active. When he was on his feet he became active so that when experiencing anger, for example, Dr. Lone would have the client express it some way like hitting a block with a tennis racket or twisting the towel to express the anger or lying over the breathing stool to not only open the chest out but to let out the crying and, and etc. So they express the emotions with the body uh, component, not just talking about it. That And another big one more big thing that I feel Dr. Lowen did, and I don't think this has been appreciated enough, he, he didn't just analyze. He, as I said, he got the patient active in doing things, but another big, big change, he helped the client see what they could not do or what was missing and then introduced that into the therapy so the client could learn what he never had been able to do before for all kind of emotional reasons. For example, to say no and uh, to really feel his no and his right to say no and to express it verbally and then with the kicking. So that's, a, that's adding something that the client couldn't do in the therapy. So that's completely different from just analysis, just analyzing what the problems have been. No doubt, no doubt that's true. And I would think as well that Another thing that Lowen did that was that was unique and special was to expand on Reich's study of character analysis. Right. And I think the uh, the in effect the formalization or the creation of a conceptual framework of of an organism's development, a human's development yeah. from birth to adolescence as detailed so thoroughly in physical dynamics of character structure now known as language of the body. I can't help but think that that also is a very unique contribution that many people are building off of now 